mountains and landscapes are famous the world over. Huangshan of Anhui is a scenic spot whose morning mists and clouds are a tourist attraction. No one can be considered learned without having visited the Great Wall. As one of the eight great relics in the world, the Great Wall is not only a symbol of China and a cradle of Chinese culture, but is also of high cultural and artistic value in world civilization. Xielin, in the province of Yunnan, is full of legends and an ideal tourist spot. This is the Three Pagoda Temple. The Three Pagoda Temple, lying at the foot of Chongshan, was built in the Five Dynasties over a thousand years ago. Its luster remains as brilliant as ever. China's famous mountains and rivers are interrelated with its schools of martial arts. The Wutang Mountain is where the Wutang School originated. The Omei School was founded on the Omei Mountain. Naturally, the Shaolin School originated from the Shaolin Temple of Sungshan. Our film crew has covered famous mountains and rivers throughout China in order to introduce these scenic spots and to give you the background of the different schools of Chinese martial arts. The magnificent mountains and rivers are impregnated with beautiful artistic flowers. Kung Fu is also an art like that of the beautifully sculptured crystal ice lantern, which is so exquisite and colorful. Hence, it is also called Wu Shu, or Wu Yi, which means martial arts. There is a keen fever for learning the martial arts in urban and rural areas, mountain and ports throughout the whole country. China strongly supports the promotion of martial arts. Some schools list martial arts as an elective subject. Martial arts can be practiced anytime and anywhere. Men of all ages can do it. Even toddlers learning to walk can get into the act. Look, lifting the pole. Whoops, mounting the horse. <laughs> Monkey style. This little chap wants to learn monkey boxing. <laughs> Martial arts can be used for defense, as well as for cultivating one's physical health. They've been widely recognized as a form of national sport with scientific value. It's also one of China's valuable cultural inheritances. But where did this valuable inheritance come from? Who? When? Where? We believe even martial artists can't answer these questions. But we will show many of them performing their acts. Demonstrating the broadsword is Pan Ching Fu, who may be familiar to you. He is the martial arts instructor for the movie Shaolin Temple. Look how sophisticated and polished his sword play is. This is fancy boxing. It combines fastness, toughness, and skill. Demonstrating before the Jade Palace, carved with countless ice blocks, is dragon swordsman Liu Qi Ching. This sword weighs over 10 catties, but Mr. Liu, who is 100 years old, wields it at will. A rare feat for a man of his age. Even more convincing is this old lady, Hao Xiu Xian. She has practiced the sword play for years. No wonder she's so proficient at it. hasn't dulled their spirits, now has it. Chinese martial arts have a long history. During the Stone Age, stone and wooden sticks were used for hunting. Although primitive, 
they were extremely useful. The words Kung Fu appeared as early as the reign of Emperor Xian Yun. During the Xiao Dynasty, boxing, martial arts and archery appeared in books of odes and rites. During the East Han era, barehanded and armed jewels were featured, as you can see from these paintings. Chinese martial arts were most popular during the Ming Dynasty, when different schools of Kung Fu came into being. Glossary of Boxing by Chi Chi Kuang features 16 types of boxing. Subsequently, some divided the various schools into inner and outer types. Shaolin boxing is generally regarded as the most orthodox outer boxing. It originates from the Shaolin temple, Sangshan. The Shaolin temple was built during the North Wai era and is now 1500 years old. During all these years, countless famous masters have been cultivated here. Among them was Dharma, called the first master, who faced a wall in the temple for 10 years. The Dharma temple was built in memory of him. At present, the temple still has 13 Shaolin high monks. The youngest one, named Master Siu Shi, is over 60 years old. These are not towers, but the graveyard of Shaolin monks. There are now still over 200 graves left. Only leaders of the sect or high monks with advanced martial arts were buried here. Don't belittle these inscriptions. They contain the most outstanding calligraphies of Tang, Song, Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties. Most impressive is the personal inscription of Emperor Li Ximin of Tang Dynasty. And this is what he looked like. The White Garment Hall of Shaolin Temple is called the Gateway to Learning. The wall paintings inside depict the Shaolin disciples in practice. Shaolin boxing comprises both tough and supple movements. Internally, it stresses energy, breath and spirit. Externally, hands, eyes and body. This is a comprehensive practice. The characteristics of Shaolin boxing are continuity, variety and flexibility. That's why martial artists from many countries, particularly Japan, have come far to visit the temple. Shaolin boxing has become the medium of promoting international friendship. This orthodox low hand boxing is also called 18 low hand style. This monk duplicates all the low hand attitudes. The style was reportedly founded by Dharma during his 10 years of wall facing. Low hand boxing ranks high in the martial world. Reportedly, the Shaolin boxing systematically introduced during the Ming Dynasty was derived from Lohan boxing. This is patriarch boxing. This young lady, named Chen Xin, is the orthodox descendant of its founding ancestor. This boxing comprises crane, monkey, Lohan, Buddha, and master styles. It is abrupt, fast, and accurate in movement. Even one single blow could kill. After seeing some hand-to-hand -hand techniques, we now show you the long style. This performer is Yu Xiaopeng, and his boxing combines Zha, Hua, Pao, Hong, and Shaolin styles. Fluency and poise, agility, speed, strength and clear rhythm 
are its characteristics, particularly in the leaping movements. This performer, championship winner, is Wang Chin Chun. The cudgel is a long weapon and is used in many different ways. The most popular is the Shaolin style. The famed 13 cudgel wielders of the Shaolin used this style to rescue Emperor Tang Tai Tung. To this day, the cudgel is credited to Shaolin. It's certainly a handy weapon. Though made of wood, it is capable of breaking a sword by impact. This lady performer is Hao Chi Hua. She is the four-time all-round individual champion of Kung Fu in China. Her swordplay is incredibly swift and yet graceful. ground is also a kind of kung fu. Yes, kung fu has ground moves too. It's called di tang, or ground boxing. This performer, Chao Chang Jun, is regarded as a martial arts wizard. He specializes in ground boxing and can roll, somersault, kick, and rise up at will. He's full of energy and vigor. A layman somersaulting like this may break his back. champion. He's using a nine section whip, which is really terrific. Unlike other weapons, it's a kind of soft weapon. Each section is hard and both qualities are combined to his advantage. hardly visible when worn around the waist. In the olden days, it was used for self-defense while traveling. This is South Shaolin Temple. This is the champion of the Southern style, Qiu Jian Gua, and he's been a national championship six times in a row. Shaolin is divided into north and south styles. The south style features powerful blows, firm stance, variety of attack, and clear rhythm. Yelling helps to develop strength. Boxing champion Huang Fui Chen is not only powerful but elegant in poise. She's really a shy girl, but not when she's boxing, then she gives no quarter. She's a veritable powerhouse. With a girlfriend like her who needs a bodyguard. Hey, wanna get 
wants to, don't worry. He's a six-time champion. They're using the South Star. Each move is perfectly timed and beautifully executed. Really a pleasure to watch. Having seen Southern boxing, let's see some weaponry. These three are expert martial artists. One against two. Using a three-section cudgel, one must be all eyes and ears. Fast reflexes, speed and accuracy are essential. There is no room for error. These two just demonstrated the long boxing and the cudgel techniques. Now they're having a duel. Normally, the armed opponent has the advantage over the barehanded foe. But this is not always the case. Now he snatches the cudgel away. In Kung Fu, the unexpected often occurs. Martial arts are mysterious and varied. Now, here's a remarkable young boy. His broadsword seems to be alive. The chopping, slicing, piercing moves are all clean cut and powerful. was a martial infant prodigy at eight years old, Li Liantie, now an international action star. This film segment features his performance in Sunbeam Theater when he accompanied the Chinese martial arts team to Hong Kong. His performance caused a sensation and met with thunderous applause. Li Lianjie is the five-time national individual overall champion and the winner of several sports medals in China. Rome was not built in one day. Li had an aptitude for martial arts in childhood. He is far from satisfied with his present achievement and never relaxes in practicing, hoping to introduce martial arts to the world. He concentrates on each and every movement and combines energy, breath and spirit into one. He excels not only in boxing, but also in weaponry. He specializes in all kinds of martial arts. He assimilates other styles into his techniques. He is gifted with natural endowments and has made amazing progress. a happy family life and gets on well with his brothers and his sisters. Today is his 19th birthday. The whole family is making shrimp dumplings, his favorite food. Besides dumplings, there is of course the birthday cake. Mmm, delicious. Some people say eating sweet and salty food together is bad for the system. But who cares when everyone is having such a good time together? This is no time for dieting.
This is Li Lianqie's master, Wu Pin, the coach of the Beijing team. He is very demanding of his pupils. He is debonair, but very strict when given instructions. The Beijing martial arts team has won 10 group championships in various national tournaments. They owe their success not to luck, but to long periods of training. Most of them started from childhood. This lady coach, Chen Huyukun, is also a former champion. And here is Chu Hua, dubbed Lady of the Three Swords, the four-time all-round champion of the national tournaments. She was named Sportswoman of the Year for 1983. Her coach is Li Chin Feng. Her spinning movements are difficult to master. In Kung Fu, balance is very important and must be practiced. Falling is also a kind of exercise. Mastering it prevents fractures. All kinds of weapons must be tested. Their handed skills are basic and are never forgotten. Most people have heard of Tai Chi boxing. It was originated by Cheng Wang Tin in the late Ming Dynasty from 29 movements. Later, it evolved into the four schools of Yang, Sun, Wu, and Chen. As it cultivates physical fitness and helps prevent diseases, it is very popular. This is Yang Cheng Do, the fourth generation descendant of the Yang's shadow boxing, demonstrating his family style. See how he moves with ease and grace. This 70-year-old lady is the daughter of Master Sun Lu Tang, the originator of the Sun style of Tai Chi. Notice again the fluid movements. This lady, Wu Yinghua, is even older. At 79 years of age, her stance is as steady as a rock. She's demonstrating the Wu style. She may easily live to a hundred or more. The Chen shadow boxing is the most orthodox. Chen Xiaowang is the 19th generation Cheng Wang Tin's grandson. He was last year's Tai Chi champion. The most outstanding part of his hereditary Kung Fu is the limb twisting movements. What could they be doing? In Tai Chi, it's called arm pushing. In fact, this type of elbowing in shadow boxing is to throw an opponent off balance, to take him unawares. The movement, seemingly applied gently, can push a rival several meters away. The demonstrator, Feng Chiu Chang, 
started learning given boxing and one mind at 13 and learned the Chen's shadow boxing from Chen Huaqin's 17th generation descendant, Chen Fa Ko. He could be considered a wizard. His visit to the US in 1981 brought him more recognition. Chen Xiaowang of the Chen style is an international coach of Tai Chi. His pupils come from all parts of the world. He's an accomplished instructor. Let's see how they're doing. Oh, awful. But never mind. A novice can't help making stiff movements. Practice makes perfect, you know. A poor shadow boxer can be compared to a bad violin player making a jarring sound. But success will come. Many Japanese have come by chartered plane to learn it. Besides Tai Chi boxing, there is Tai Chi swordplay. Now let's have a look at Ome boxing. Ome Mountain, lying on the west of Ome City, Sichuan, is one of the four famous sacred mountains of Buddhism. The All Buddha Peak rises some 3,000 meters above sea level. The magnificent and quiet surroundings are ideal for Kung Fu learners. Patriotism Temple also attracts many visitors. How does Ome boxing distinguish itself from Shaolin's and Tai Chi? Let's see for ourselves. Wang Xiaofang is now demonstrating Deng Chuang boxing, a southern type. It centers on defense and attacks only at the appropriate moment. The word Deng means to wait. They are practicing fire dragon boxing. Its footwork takes three forms, dodge, walk, and hold. The walk is actually an offensive tactic. This gentleman is dubbed Old Monkey King. He's still so nimble in performing monkey boxing. No mean feat since he's over 70 years old. Monkey boxing has kept him flexible. An ordinary man of his age would find somersaulting rather difficult, to say the least. This is today's Monkey King. Xiang Chang Kui. He spent many months with the monkeys of Ome Mountain, sharing their lifestyle.
his monkey style is really fantastic, thanks to his monkey friends. Every movement he does resembles that of a monkey. He seems to be clowning, but each of his strokes could be fatal. This monkey, on seeing his performance, seems to ask his mother, is he really one of us? You may have heard of the legend of Madame White Snake. Do you know where she took human form? It is the White Dragon Cave of Omei Mountain. Here we can see snake boxing, which as its name indicates, comprises of serpentine movements. The moves are marvelously fluid and very graceful. Those rocks are covered with a slippery moss and her footwork must be firm. One wonders if the legend of Madame Whitesnake was really a myth after all. The Omei thorn is about 30 centimeters in length and is pointed at both ends, with the ring in the center fitted onto the middle finger. It is twirled around using the strength generated by wrist tension. They say Chen Pang of the Seven Swordsmen used this type of weapon. Many Lady Kung Fu experts favor this short weapon. The tasseled short sword is called a hundred stabs. The sword is usually associated with nobility. Many of them were elaborate heirlooms. Its lightness enables extra speed and mobility. The short form is most suitable for girls. But some girls take a fancy to long swords as well. This girl, for example, is wielding two tasseled swords, sometimes referred to as the dragon and the phoenix. They fall under the category of twin weapons and are difficult to master, especially with the tassels, which often tend to get in the way. Though pliant, these weapons are lethal. Another twin weapon is the double whip. 
being soft, they are much more difficult to use than swords. A beginner practicing them must use ropes to avoid self-injury. This girl has been practicing for quite some time and can will them to do what she wants. Several opponents would find it difficult to approach her. women can be easily bullied. These three sisters fight even tougher than men. The single sword versus double spears is really exciting to watch. Taishan is also one of the four sacred Buddhist mountains in China. Lying northeast of Wutai County, Shanxi, it is formed of five mountains. The top is like a dice, hence its name, Five Platform Mountain. landscape here is ideal. No wonder the fifth general of the legendary Yang family chose to become a monk here. And so did tattooed monk Lu Qi Xian. Sen come back to life? Of course not. This monk is only copying Lu Chi Sen. He is performing Wu Tai boxing. The weapon used by this old man is called the spade. Lu Chi Sen also used it. It was remodeled from a walking stick into its present shape. The famous movements comprise of worshipping Buddhas, wagging the tail, and carrying the mountain. In the olden days, the spear was called the forefather of all weapons and the soldier of all soldiers. Is it really so powerful? Chi Chi Kuang of the Ming Dynasty used it to suppress bandits. The Yang spear technique was General Yang Wu Lang's speciality. He mastered it when he was taking shelter in Wutai Mountain. The Yang spear can stab, circle and entangle, and it can also be used as a cudgel. Its point flashes in and out with lightning speed. Some say the man is like a bow and the spear an arrow. The three-section cudgel is a soft weapon. Being very flexible and versatile, it has the advantages of a long, short, soft and hard weapon. When stretched as a long weapon, it can be used to its best advantage. When shrunk, it can be used as a short weapon for attack or defense and can entangle an opponent's weapon. we show you hands versus the spear. The spear user has the advantage over the unarmed opponent who must get in close by ducking the spear. But 
one must be extremely sharp-eyed and flexible. Or one may be stabbed before getting close. Let's have a look at the outcome. This is Liangshan, also called Water Mountain, featured in the water margin. It is high and overgrown with reeds. It is precipitously situated. This is called Sangqiang's track, leading to Sangqiang camp. It was the rendezvous of the 108 heroes of Liangshan. was the pass guarded by black whirlwind Li Kuai. His stone sculpture was made by his descendants. He wielded a pair of axes. Besides chopping wood, the axe can also be a powerful weapon. And what kind of kung fu is this then? It's tiger killer Wu Sung's boxing. His hands in fetters, Wu Sung could only use his feet to overpower the animal until the fetters were unlocked. Hence, this type of boxing was originated. This film segment features the performance of Liang Shan's heroine, Lady Sun, using two swords against the troops. This is one of China's traditional weapons. Strange in shape, it has a hook and a ring, and is considered a sword. This crutch was originated by the lame monk Li. His descendants remodeled it into the double crutches. This is called ox head spade. It is shaped like a dragon claw. And though small, it has many names, including Tian Kan and Antler Sword. Hooks of this kind are rather special. The fabric is designed to dazzle the opponent. The hook also serves the purpose of entangling the sword and dagger. The hook user always bounces up and down to change position and hit the opponent blends with the weapon in unified attack. The combination of a sword and a whip is rare, and it is difficult to combine a hard weapon with a soft one. This young lady, however, seems to be managing very well. traditional weapons. Now let's take a look at some ordinary tools used as weapons. Here, one is using a hammer and the other a carrying pole, fighting against each other. This comic encounter seems to have gained quite an audience. Shaolin, Omei, and Wutai Mountain, we now take you to Wutang Mountain. Situated in Hupei, it has 72 peaks, which are rugged and awe-inspiring. It is a famous mountain for Taoists. On the top, there is a temple made of gold and bronze.
Since Emperor Yung Lo of Ming Dynasty was titled Emperor of the True Martial Arts, it has become sacred ground. Many Taoists have practiced here, including Chang San Feng. Now, only this priest remains. Wu-Tang swordplay has been regarded as the gem of Wu-Tang and a traditional skill. Let's see how it varies from the others. This long-tasseled sword performer is Li Xia, China's lady swordplay champion. Her movements are free and easy and steady. Did you see the tassel at the end of the sword? The tassel is as long as the sword itself and it could cause the opponent to mistake it for the sword. The beautiful scenery is ideal for the practicing of martial arts. What this boxer performs is the Tong Pi, or Gibbon boxing. The movements are light and eccentric, and full of vigor. It is a unique style. Another unique style is the drunken style. It can be performed with or without involving wine. Drunken swordplay is the combination of drunken boxing and swordplay. This artist seems drunk. His steps seem to float. His movements do not seem to be coordinated properly. Actually, every attacking attitude is used, but disguised in the style of swordplay. Outwardly he's drunk, but inwardly he's perfectly sober. Direct clash is avoided. Perhaps we could see it better in slow motion. This gentleman, Li Shi Chao, is the current champion in this star.
What would you do if you were attacked? They seem to know. Their motto is, learn Kung Fu so you'll always be prepared. Have you ever noticed the movements of ducks with their strange gait? This is 80-year-old Li Yang Kui demonstrating duck boxing. He moves like a duck. He has learned from the ducks for several decades. It's easy, you say. Just waddle like a duck. But have you noticed the footprints he's making? Those are heavy footsteps. are also emulated by martial artists. These two cranes are billing and cooing. That's not it. But this man is every inch a crane. A kung fu crane, that is. dog, of course. Earth Dragon Boxing is a style. It features many ground kicks, using both feet often. kick is deadly. Another feature is lifting up one leg. That's when the opponent must be really careful. A dog owner may learn a few things from his pet. The praying mantis uses its powerful forelegs to paralyze its prey. Hence, mantis boxing stresses the arms, wrist and arm strength, plus shoulder strength. Each movement must be executed swiftly and accurately. body force passes through the arms for maximum impact.
Now, here's a nimble fellow. This one seems to be drunk. Monkey boxing versus drunken boxing. This is an orthodox movement of a drunkard catching a monkey. Can he do it? He does. The eagle is an awesome sight, with sharp claws flashing. Eagle claw boxing is similar. It combines toughness and swiftness with tact and calmness. Just like an eagle springing on its prey. Champion Xiu Xiang Tong demonstrates this style. Chickens are easy prey for an eagle, but snakes are a little more difficult. Let's watch eagle claw boxing against snake boxing. These two fighters are experts. The snake entangles the eagle, but the eagle immediately gets out of it. Guess who will win? Yaofei's grave lies by the West Lake, Hangzhou, Jiaqiang. This hero of South Song invented Xing Yi, or form boxing, based on five element boxing, which imitates the movements of 12 animals. Demonstrating form boxing is champion Liang Chang Xiang. See if you can name each of the animals. Inner force plays a big role in form boxing. Five element base invokes awareness in the exponent of the five elements.
metal, wood, water, fire and earth. Thus merging spiritual softness with physical hardness. Bakwa, or eight diagram palm, was originated by Mr. Tong Hai Chuan, who has been dead for more than a century. His pupil, Li Tzu Ming, like other eight diagram admirers, built a mausoleum in his memory. Mr. Tung became an eight diagram master by combining two styles he learnt earlier, plus a Taoist method. Seeing is believing. Let's watch this lady's performance. The eight diagram palm demonstrator is Miss Chun Yen, a champion. Have you spotted the golden palace behind her? It was made of bronze by Wu San Kui of Qing Dynasty. Now let's watch the action. The arms and body follow the feet. conforms to the shape of an octagon. It is highly unusual. Despite the variety of movement, there is no confusion. Each diagram style features swordplay as well. This sword is long and heavy and difficult to lift up, let alone wield with the eight diagram footwork. But this lady demonstrates a variety of styles with ease and grace. This is eight diagram sparring. It develops coordination and contact experience. When introducing Chinese martial arts, we mustn't omit breath control or qi kong. 52-year-old Hao Xiu Ying has learned kung fu for over 40 years and has been dubbed King of Breath Control, China's Man of Steel and the Invincible Man. In fact, he has lived up to these names. His incredible act is thousands of years old. With a headband on his head and a handkerchief in his mouth, a string round his neck, now watch. <coughs> the stone breaks. Let's see it in slow motion. Watch clearly. <coughs> Solid granite. These are rocks. They could be broken with the knife hand. But with one finger, that's too small. Here's a bigger one. It's 
like slicing a watermelon. All six of his family are highly skilled. His wife, Sun Shiulan, supports herself on sharp knives, forming a human bridge. A 200 carry stone is put on her back. A 12 carry sledgehammer will be used on the stone. Let's see what happens. The stone is broken, but she's unharmed. Now we introduce Mr. Howe's 15-year-old daughter, Chan Xie. Everything's ready. Her mother tests her abdomen. What's this? The board weighs over 200 catties. And they're using two. Still not enough? Each weight weighs 20 kilos. And there are 75 weights in all. The total weight is almost 2,000 kilos. Will she be crushed? She can still move. This is breath control. The Howe family have acquired their skills as a result of hard practice every day. Their backyard is their training ground. Two of them are practicing breath control, concentrated at the throat. The inch-thick iron bar is bended between them. It's real steel, and even Mr. Howe can hardly straighten it up again. This is the second son, Howe Yong, aged 12. The throat is a vital part, fatal if pierced. But Hao Yong's neck, weighed down with five bricks, can stand a sharp spear at the throat. His father will hammer the bricks. Hey! The bricks are shattered and the spear is broken, but Hao Yong remains unhurt. Let's see it in slow motion. Hey! Children, please don't try this. They are practiced again. Here's an unusual way of cracking walnuts. This is Hao Xu Ying's eldest son, Hao Chun. He has been taught well by his father. He practices brass head technique. Hao's family are all literally hard-headed. Hao Chun will show us the marble slab that can support two men. Hao grasps his eldest son, Hao Chun, upside down. Then smashes his head down. Watch.
only the marble breaks. Like father, like son. Smashed on the head at his tender age. How can he stand so many tiles? Really incredible. And he's smiling. An adult can stand one tile. Try it if you're tired of living. After years of hard practice, every martial artist from every region comes to take part in the annual national kung fu tournaments. Martial artists throughout the country have come to take part in the open meet. First, the Jiangsu team, shelf at speciality, Yao Boxing. Now the Qi Jiang team's Shaolin Boxing. movements and outstanding style win them a team medal. The youngest of all the participants is Wang Li. At only 11 years of age, he qualified for his event. Brandishes the cudgel like a magic wand. Many adults aren't his match. He's a natural athlete. This young lady, Yu Xia, wields the spear with great skill. The force of every movement flows up to the spearhead. Dance is deep rooted and unshaken, yet her movement swift.
She ends up champion of the National Spear Contest. These contestants seem to forget it's only a tournament and not a duel. Each and every blow seems fatal. They probably don't know what tenderness is. Most men would stay clear of them. Frailty, thy name is woman, no longer holds true. These two are no comedians. It's the drunken boxer versus the long fist boxer. One uses soft movements and the other hard ones. Unlike the last event, this has a different rhythm. It's not only a match of strength, but also of wits. Classmates, but there is no quarter given in competition. Fifth Dan experts came to give a demonstration. Shaolin boxing could be regarded as the most representative of all schools of Chinese boxing. In Japan, there is an association of Shaolin boxing which has organized several performances of martial arts in China. The founder of the association, Sung Tao Qian, after completing his training in Shaolin, return to Japan to promote this type of boxing. It now has a membership of over a million. a style combines Shaolin boxing, judo and karate. It seems boxing will gradually become internationalized, merging different styles into one. The Tsia Kian ladies team members perform three section cudgel versus cudgel. Exact timing is required and any slight slip could cause fractured bones or permanent injury. The three Changs and Wang are famous in the Chinese martial arts world. Performing bare hands versus spear and sword are the three Changs of Xiang Zhu team.
Martial arts tournaments are full of variety. Each team designs its own events. The Xu Xuan team's duel is different from that of other teams. They are performing shield versus sword and bare hands against spear. The contest is complex and intriguing. Attacking and defending at the same time are not easy to achieve. The final event is a match among three members of the Jiangsu team. Martial arts tournament has come to an end. The Beijing team wins the team championships. China's Kung Fu heritage, through sports and tournaments, will flourish and reach around the globe to embrace all.